Bet Online is your number one source for all summer sports this season, whether it's golf, baseball, NBA, NHL playoffs, uh, and then, of course, all the latest stats, news, scores and, and are all available as you follow your favorite teams. Glenn, it's been a crazy NBA playoff this year mm-hmm. so far. NHL as well, but certainly uh, with basketball. But I'm really excited for this partnership. Looking forward to working with them. Uh, and uh, hopefully you guys can have some fun using it. Yeah, no doubt. And you, and also with Bet Online, you can get all the latest odds, all the latest lines. Uh, including the latest team matchups, player props, odds on just about every sport you can imagine. Uh, so make sure you guys head to their website today. That's betonline.ag, or you can download uh, their mobile app to your mobile device on both Android or Apple devices. It's just betonline.ag. You'll see a big B there. Go ahead and download that. Bet Online, where the game starts. I'm going to do my best to introduce the one, the only, Jamie on Franklin, standing. Six foot two, 310 pounds, according to Duke University's website. Uh, <laughs> defensive tackle, like I said, straight out of Duke University, the Blue Devil himself, Jamie and Franklin, undrafted rookie, uh, defensive tackle for the Baltimore Ravens. How are you doing, my man? I'm Thanks good, man. On. How are you guys? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Absolutely. First of all, dude. What you got going on in the room behind you? Holy heck. Yeah, so uh, this is my brother-in-law's room, and it's a mess, but uh, he's a big sports guy, so there's lots of memorabilia all around. There's signed walls, there's signed posters, and all kinds of stuff, man. If there's any Steelers stuff in the background, just let me know. I'll move out of the way. Yeah, so there you go. You just, just tear it right off the walls. Yeah, That's right. <laughs> you know how it goes. Start, you, look, you got to start him young. You know how it goes. That's yeah, absolutely. absolutely right. <laughs> Look, I can tell you what, man, uh, really quickly, speaking of rivalries, um, you, you might be too young for this, but back in the ACC days, Glenn and I are, of course, our Terps fans by nature, mm-hmm. that when the, the Terps with Juan Dixon and Gary Williams and Steve Blake and Lonnie Baxter back in the day with Jay Williams and mm-hmm. I can't even name. There's Come a ton on of now, other Jamie, guys. We're a lot there. older than Jamie on. We're a lot it's older. <laughs> but those basketball okay. days, of course, you're a Duke guy. Uh, those were those were a lot of fun, but I got to ask you, um, starting off, how'd you end up at Duke and why'd you choose to go in there? Well, first of all, I, I definitely know about that. My dad's a Terp, so like he's a Terp. Oh, now. nice. All right. You know, okay. He didn't I go, but like that's he's he's a Commanders fan, unfortunately, but he's like all, all about Maryland sports. So right. like, growing up, I, I know all about it. Um, went to a few games and, you know, he's pretty rowdy about him. So when I when I made the decision to go to Duke, he was not too happy about it. So uh, I've, I've got all of that. I, I don't know all the all the old guys, old rivalries all the way, but uh, I remember watching some games and watching like Gravis Vasquez and uh, Steve Blake oh, and those yeah. guys. So, yeah, yeah, I got a little, the you know, general. Got a little oh, yeah. So yeah, but yeah, um, you know, ultimately, uh, when I made the decision to leave Notre Dame, um, Duke was one of the first offers that I got uh, coming out of high school. So I always had uh, you know some feelings about them and uh, really a high respect for them, but. Ultimately, just the ACC, you know, what the ACC has and the brand that Duke is and the degree that I was able to obtain from there is uh, what really uh, made the decision really clear cut for me uh, to make that transition to North Carolina and, you know, play in the ACC against top competition and get that degree really. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, no, doubt. no doubt. That degree will last you much longer than uh, hopefully a very long football career. So certainly congratulations on that. Now, you're a, you're a Maryland guy, right? Like this is a bit of a homecoming coming back. Yeah. Uh, to, to Maryland, right? Absolutely. I mean, like I said, that's all, all I've ever known was uh, Ravens football. You know, growing up, um, my dad was a Redskins guy, but, uh, you know, something always drew me towards the, the Baltimore Ravens. So, yeah, it's definitely uh, – it's crazy, you know, talking to all my peers and everything like that. And, you know, uh, one of my buddies, he's an agent in, the you know, the sports business, and he was like, I can't believe that you get to play for your favorite team. So uh, it's so definitely cool. a, a surreal moment. So walk us through that a little bit. I mean, it's a little different, of course, when when you go undrafted. I think in some some ways you got some advantages. Um, we've we spent a lot of time here on this show talking about and analyzing uh, success stories here in Baltimore with undrafted guys. But I think it's cool. One, you get a choice. Two, you know, you play well. I'm pretty sure you get you get to that that paycheck faster potentially on how things line up, which is which is also nice. Um, but how did it how did it all line up here in Baltimore to to you know make you uh, eventually a Baltimore Raven? Walk us through that a little bit. 
Yeah, well, uh, you know, ultimately throughout the process, um, you know, I didn't even have the Ravens in my mind, given, you know, obviously the stout defensive line room that we have. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously very fortunate to be a part of, you know, these are guys like I've, I've spoke with uh, Michael Pierce often, you know, throughout the process, throughout college and, you know, really getting like nuggets from him on how to play the game the way he does. And uh, to be here with him, it, you know, it's a blessing, man, to learn from one of the best in the game and him and Beeks and, you know, just, uh, you know, open, open my ears, open my eyes and learn how to play at this level. But uh, yeah, going throughout the process, um, you know, the Ravens and, uh, you know, the D-line coach, uh, Coach DJ, we we spoke quite a bit. So uh, I knew that there was some interest there. Uh, I wasn't unable to do the the local day because, you know, I'm from the Eastern Shore. So it's kind of like five miles outside the radius of what, what was allowed. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I wasn't able to do the local day, which sucked. But, uh, you know, I knew the interest was there. And, uh, you know, obviously it would have, you know, like it's a dream come true to play for uh, the Ravens. But I, I wasn't really sure if the opportunity would present itself. Um had a, a good bit of teams. It was like seven teams total that were reaching out to me. But uh, ultimately uh, on draft day, you know, right after the draft closed, like my line rang, I spoke with my agent and, you know, Baltimore was uh, was clear cut. That was the choice that I knew that uh, I needed to be here and it was the place for me to be. So, so cool, is that man. is that a pretty quick process? Like as soon as the draft's over, is the phone ringing? Oh, it was. Yeah. I mean, uh, I know I think that the pick was already submitted, but it hadn't been announced yet. And, you know, I already was wow. like, my agent called me. was like, you know, we're going to Baltimore. And I said, let's do it. <laughs> you know, I, there's no there's no second guessing about it. I was ready to, you know, come home and play at home. Man, that's so awesome. And I think it's I'm, I'm just guessing here and you can you can confirm or uh, say you know, speak to the contrary. But I imagine that when a team like Baltimore does call, like you said, uh, there has to be some preliminary research done by you and your agent and you obviously knowing the team growing up and then him being an agent himself. Uh, simply understanding the success that um, undrafted guys have had here. Did that help sway you? You know, and you talked about Michael Pierce, an undrafted guy himself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but that did that sway you, of course, when uh, deciding to come to Baltimore? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, you know, being a Ravens guy my whole life, it's uh, it's an opportunity that I wasn't going to let slide, you know. Uh, and everything that I had saw growing up and, you know, heard about is true. You know, I experienced it through this rookie mini camp. Uh, it's a culture that, you know, that I'd always seen and wanted to be a part of and getting in the room and getting in the defensive unit room and listening to Coach Harbaugh speak. I knew that it was the right place for me. Uh, obviously, they have a, a good success with undrafted uh, free agents, especially D. Lyman and using Michael Pierce as a prime example. Uh, so I knew that I was going to be developed. But uh, obviously, just the culture and what when you think of Ravens defense, it's just something that you want to be a part of. And, uh, you know, whatever my role may be, whatever I need to do to be a part of that, it was just something that I couldn't pass up. Yeah, so yeah. cool. As we uh, we talked to Ravens defensive lineman Jamie on Franklin, and again, appreciate your time. Uh, w- when you see you're going to not just the Ravens who have a story tradition, but coming off the heels of being the number one defense in all of football, leading the league in, in, in really all the important, most important categories, does that does that come with a little bit extra, uh, a little bit extra juice, a little bit extra pressure, knowing that look, this isn't a team on the rebuild. This is a team that's ready to win now, and knowing that uh, you know it's probably going to be a, a pretty stout roster. This isn't a team that's you know c- picking first or second in the draft. They pick 30th. So it's a pretty good roster. Does that add a little juice to, you know, training camp and all that? Yeah, absolutely. Just, uh, you know, it's the best of the best. You know, the NFL is the 1% of 1%. So, um, you know, just honored to to reach that. You know, it, it you know it hit me after finishing that mini camp. Like, you know, I'm in the NFL now. But uh, it's, it's definitely a great feeling to be a part of such a, a story tradition, such a great unit. And, again, like I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be learning from some of the best defensive linemen in the league. Like, uh, you know, guys that I have watched their film and uh, tried to model their technique and model how they play in order to benefit me at the college level. So uh, really excited, really fortunate. And, you know, just to get back uh, this weekend and start working with these uh, these vets, you know, it's just uh, an opportunity that I'm excited for. And, you know, I can't wait to get rolling. You know, there's a long mm-hmm. off season still left at hand. But, you know, I think that uh, just from how I was able to adjust and learn on the fly this mini camp, that getting around those vets and soaking up what they have to offer will really uh, help me in the long run. Yeah, what was that, uh, that mini camp? You know, what was rookie mini camp like? What was that experience? Uh, like for you um and were there any big changes that you necessarily were or weren't expecting you know coming into your first experience in the nfl 
Yeah, I mean, it, it was everything that I expected as far as like, you know, it's just like I, I attribute it to uh, when I came out of high school and I got to college, like the game just moves faster. And, uh, you know, I was talking to Coach Harbaugh he, uh, and Coach uh, Orr about, you know, what did you guys notice after the first day of practice? And I'm like, you know, excuse my language, shit moves fast. You know, that's one thing that I, I was like, yeah, Coach, like shit moves fast. So uh, that's one thing that I definitely expected. But I think that between learning learning the plays on the fly, learning my role, and just I uh, learned the new techniques that I hadn't experienced in college and the way that I played in my defense at a 4 5 at Duke, uh, it really just showed me that, like, you know, this is high level. You know, things are coming at you fast. And the faster you learn it, the faster that you are able to expand your football IQ, the better off you're, you'll be. But I say it was very fast paced, but, you know, it felt good. Uh, you know, you spend all these months training to do stupid drills at pro days and combines. And, you know, I'm a football player. You know, I'm going to bring your lunch pail and knock people around and to get back out there and to be able to do that. And, you know, it felt good, you know, obviously not being able to be in pads, but to, to get out there and bang around, run around, fly to the ball and stuff, that, that really felt good. And uh, it really showed me that, you know, I belong. You know, you have a always, if you don't have a sense of doubt or, you know, feeling like that, then you don't care. You know, that's something that mm -hmm. a lot of people are like, you know, do you, you think you belong or things like that? And, you know, you always have that doubt, but, you know, you get out there and you get to moving. I was like, man, I feel like I belong here and I feel like that this is what I want to do. So uh, I was really good. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, I, I always wonder, like, is it one of those things sometimes when I'll, uh, I'll be like a, a customer at a, a certain store or restaurant, and then you kind of get a, finally get a peek behind the curtain of that. And sometimes it's disappointing. Sometimes it's like, man, I thought it would be more organized than this, or I thought it would be, you know, this or that, you know, being a Ravens fan, you finally get a peek behind the curtain. It sounds like it's kind of lived up to, to all the, all that you kind of thought it was like, was there anything you were like, oh, I thought this would be a little bit different? Was there any surprises in that regard? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I think that, you know, obviously being playing high level football at, uh, in college and, you know, seeing the facilities and things like that, I think everything was up to par, man. Everything was what I expected it to be, uh, being the Baltimore Ravens, you know, getting in that locker room and seeing your name on that locker and like realizing that you are now a part of it. You're no longer a fan, but you are a player for the organization is such a such a great feeling to have. But mm -hmm. uh, everything lived up to expectations and surpassed them really uh, to be in those meeting rooms, uh, to see the slides with Ray Lewis and Haloti Nada and Terrell Suggs and, you know, to, to realize that I'm a part of that deal. Defense it's crazy and man. whatever whatever i contribute to uh you know i'm just trying to leave it better than i found it and better than i watched it when i was growing up so Woo. that's just really a great feeling that's that's so that's awesome, man. awesome man Suggs, ray and there you are jamie on that's right <laughs> belong there yes sir that's so awesome man and congratulations once again of course i we do have a another question from our uh our producer dk of course who's in the background said uh where do you learn public speaking is there a class you've taken to learn how to present yourself publicly uh you seem to be extremely articulate so if you're gonna give duke credit for this one jamie on yeah, you're gonna man. have to mute you know i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> no i mean i was i was always taught and you know grew grew up to be able to speak well and you know just know my surroundings and present myself in a manner where i can communicate amongst other people but i studied studied communications and visual media studies in, in school uh because i you know like i was always taught to do what you're good at and i'm good at talking to people i'm good at communicating i'm good at speaking about sports or you know just starting conversation i'm the guy that walks into the room and you know it's quiet and you can hear anything like a penny drop on the floor and I'll, I'll crack a joke and you know break the ice so uh, that's always something I've taken pride in is being able to speak well amongst my peers and others that uh, are highly respected but you know it's just something that I, I really care about I care about being articulate I care about care about you know being able to answer questions deeper than just you know two lines you know so uh, it's just something I've always taken pride in but uh, yeah I mean I studied communications and visual media studies in school so go Duke <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I tell you what the ravens are gonna i, I think no. we're gonna see you in a lot of press conferences yeah uh, I, can, I, I can only imagine i was gonna say though now if i'm not mistaken the same emoji is used for the ravens and the and the blue devils right isn't it the purple smiley face with the horns yeah yeah we use that quite often and the ravens ravens use that quite Look often that. as well so uh, you don't have Look to change that. that one up but yeah. certainly um yeah i i agree you look if you ever need a side hustle go to some of the other rookies and just say, look, uh, give me a consulting fee. I'll teach you how to speak in front of a microphone because yeah, you got skills. You got yeah, skills. You, yeah. There's certainly, there's certainly, uh, 
Yeah, there's some that, uh, and not just well, everybody not, needs practice. Some need practice, Jimbo. Okay. That's right. what I'm so trying to say. You know, I'm speaking league all. wide. I'm not speaking specific to the Ravens. That's right. That's right. Look, everybody you're, needs a little practice. Hey, I know, got a question though, Jamie. On is there anyone that you're looking forward to, whether it's a teammate like Lamar or or you know any anybody like that you think you might be a little bit uh, starstruck, a little. Oh, oh. Is there anyone that you can't wait to play against or, or can't wait to see for training camp when the veterans arrive? Roquan, anybody? Yeah, I mean. Uh, Obviously, it would it would be Lamar. I mean, that's uh that's somebody that I've watched and you know I've I've gone to bat for forever being a fan. So, uh, you know, being in there and seeing the locker of Lamar Jackson and seeing the locker of Derrick Henry, like you know, that'll be the moment when I finally meet those guys. That'll definitely be like a wow, like this is crazy to finally meet you guys and not only meet you guys but like to be a teammate of yours. So, uh, that's you know, it's a dream come true, man, to play with the elite of the elite, uh, former MVPs and you know, highly regarded elite talent of this. NFL league that I'm a part of now uh it's just a great feeling and uh, Kyle Hamilton's my guy so you know I won't really be too excited to see him you know I was at Notre Dame with him and I play PlayStation with him often so I'll probably you know put him a headlock or something you know that's my guy <laughs> that's awesome and now I gotta ask you a couple questions about your Twitter that's ah, okay here we gotta go ask you a couple questions about your Twitter here we go you like to talk sports okay. so uh, I noticed this actually I think this was today yes today today's the seventh yeah today uh first of all Austin, Austin Rivers is whatever, right? Oh, like, yeah. but oh, Austin, Rivers, uh, Austin Rivers tweeted out, or uh, yeah, NBA Central tweeted out, I can mm -hmm. take 30 players, quote, I can take 30 players right now in the NBA and throw them in the NFL. You cannot take 30 players in the NFL and put them in the NBA. You retweeted that and said, absurd cap. What yeah. say you to this point? I'd love to know. Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard because, I mean, he's, he's a Duke guy, you know, and you know, we're Fair. already hated. We're already hated enough. Like, I don't know why he had to go and do that, but you know, uh, you know, not all pub is bad pub. So, you know, for him, it's probably good to get the ball rolling and go viral. But, you know, there's just, there's just no way. Like, you know, I watch. I love basketball. Like, if if I knew that I was gonna be six one, then I would have gave up on my basketball dreams a long time ago. But when I was a kid, I was going oh, to dude, the, I'm I'm there, going bro. the NBA. Like, but there's not room for any six foot two center, so I gave it up. I still got a mean, I got a mean jumper, uh, like a little Tim Duncan off the glass, mid range, you know, up and under. But you okay. know, there's no room for six two guards. But uh, you know, you look at guys like Micah Parsons and you know CJ Stroud and those kind of guys, and you 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 watch the celebrity games and you see Miles Garrett Duncan and oh. stuff like that. There's guys that you know their background kind of like me. Like you you play every sport possible growing up. And there's a lot of like tight ends, like Mark Andrews, I'm sure could go give you 10 and 10 in the league, you know? Oh, for sure. But yeah, um, yeah I, I thought it was just crazy. Like there's just, there's so many athletes in this football league that we play in that are elite and elite translates, you know, elite athleticism can translate. And I mean, you mm -hmm. give them a month or two to train, you, you get them with a shooting coach, like lethal shooter, then, you know, you're going to make something happen. So well, I just Kyle Hamilton, what about him? Is he a baller or what? He's a hooper. Yeah, exactly. Like Kyle's a hooper. You know, you can go right, out Kyle. there and, you know, he can strap somebody up, man. Mm -hmm. Strap somebody up and get – and his dad's a hooper too. So, like, right. you know, I don't – it was just crazy to me. Like, you know, we already get enough hate being Duke guys, and he just <laughs> – I up tell you what, man, Eddie. for me, for me, I think of th there being a, a, a list of NBA players that – hypothetically could play in the league in the NFL. But the biggest thing that always comes down to for me is the want for physicality. Yeah. Because like NBA players are so coddled today, as far as the way the, the game is refereed, Absolutely. not like back in the day to where like, I think once again, I think there's guys that have the athletic ability, but they take one pop over the middle and it's like, yeah, I'm mm. good. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're like, yeah, I'm okay. I'm, I'll you know, tell I don't you want what, to do you this give me, You give me Russell Westbrook as a safety. You give me Dude. Zion off the edge. Whew. Probably oh, Zion is a pass Draymond rusher? Green off the edge too, but you know. Other than yeah, that, have you seen point. videos of Draymond trying to go to practice at at, at Michigan State lineup? It did not at go end? well. Yeah, I think he was on the wrong side of the ball. He wants to go yeah. there. I think he. Oh, needs to that's be great. But you're right. I mean, to deliver blows. So yeah. I think he should have been on defense. <laughs> yeah, man, could you that's imagine Zion coming off the edge? Though you're right, dude. That'd he would sick. be Miles Garrett 2.0. Like he would be yeah. insane. But I've said this Miles a long Garrett time on the court, and it like it looks like Zion, just a freaky, muscular guy, windmilling, you monster, know? <laughs> monster, and athletic. But I've always Zion said might this. eat his way to the, the rest inside. Of the world. Oh, stop it! The rest <laughs> of the world is lucky that America doesn't take soccer as seriously as other countries because. They have soccer. The rest of the world has soccer. But if we yeah. took soccer as seriously as we do football and ba basketball, 
they wouldn't have soccer either. Yeah, We'd man, have soccer. I mean, imagine imagine Tyreek Hill out there, you know, dribbling a soccer ball. It's over. like imagine One Russell minute. Westbrook is a striker. Oh, I'm over with. <laughs> yeah, over he- with. Jumping up, heading balls. It. No one's getting as high as that guy. No. Like, what no are shit. we talking? I'm putting LeBron in the net. I'm making him my goalie. Good luck scoring. Exactly. You know what I'm now, saying? <laughs> now I gotta I, I gotta also ask you first of all, your Twitter is hilarious. Some of the stuff that you tweet is you're a good follow. Uh it's it's fun stuff. We've only been following you since you obviously got picked up by the Ravens and uh don't worry, somebody had you tweeting. I don't know who this is, this must be somebody you know, but um they re you retweeted it. It was some it's a picture of Drewski coming in with a what do you have on? Like some cutoffs and a and a yeah. And a, and a hat on <laughs> Brian Kennedy. I don't know if you, I'm assuming you know that guy. Strolling, guy. In, yeah, strolling guy. into Ravens camp day one, dude. That was hilarious, man. I was man. I was cracking up, man. But the, a I, great fan base, man. Those those older guys are they're hilarious. We got the hard hat no. guys like Brian Kennedy and those guys with their podcast. They're great people, man. No, that's awesome. Now, the, now, what I want to know though, from your standpoint, you have an opportunity to let the fans know what type of player they're getting what they should expect from you out there, you know? Um, so talk to us about what people should expect to, to see when they, when they see you out there. Yeah. I mean, I think that you're, you're going to, you're going to see what you've already seen as far as a guy that, you know, that he makes others around him better. I think that my entire college career, I've been a guy that's kind of like a glue guy, you know, the guys around me play well, uh, I'm able to help out guys. And I think that, you know, dominating the line of scrimmage, knocking people back, you know, helping out guys like Roquan. I mean, making him clean so you can see the athletes run around. But uh, that's something I always take. You know, uh, we, we have to earn the right to rush the passer. So, um, you know, stopping the run is always something I've took pride in. And uh, again, to be in a room with guys like Mike Pierce, Travis Jones and those kind of guys, like I think that my game fits in right along with them. You know, it'll be a seamless transition to just learn from those guys and continue to progress in my game is you know using my hands and moving people around because uh, that's that's what this defense does you got big bodies up front moving people around you got guys you know you know causing havoc for the quarterback and you know stopping guys in the backfield and I think that'll be a lot of that in the near future Mm -hmm. I'm so excited I I love that football is all year round I mean you know what I don't care that it's not till fall I'm ready for football right now I can't wait uh, Jamie, on when you back in town when's the what's the next step for you after that rookie mini camp this past weekend yeah, so I'll be back in town on Sunday, and uh, from that from that moment forward, you know, it's it's all in, you know, just uh, bettering myself and bettering my understanding of the defense, and you know, just being a part of this culture. So, uh, really excited to to get back and uh, continue. You know, I got a little taste of uh, rookie mini camp, and you know, I'm excited, man. It's uh, it's the place to be. You know, it's uh, it's a good fit for me, not only structurally and defensively, but the culture is, uh, you know, it's everything that I'd hope for to uh, to play for and be a part of in the national football league so i uh, excited to get back and get going for real that's yeah, awesome man it, it, well look we're I, I just uh, you probably already know this but mm-hmm. uh being that we are ravens fans and you i know michael pierce look that last preseason game michael pierce i'll never forget it i was sitting in a hotel room mm-hmm. and michael absolutely dominated that game so he, he just team, took man. it for a guy at his position to take it over i think he had a, mm-hmm. a two sacks and one of them, I think, was a safety Big tackle for I mean, loss. Yeah, yeah, it was huge. I mean, it was a, it was a, such a cool thing. And you know, look, that's propelled him. That was just the the him coming on the onto the scene, right? So, mm-hmm. um, total unsolicited advice. I'm not in your shoes. I'll never be in your shoes. But don't forget that every preseason game counts. We'll be watching you. We'll be rooting so for you. So excited for you, Jamie. We'll, on. Yeah, man. We'll we'll be we'll be <clears throat> screaming for you at training camp, at preseason. Mm-hmm. Hope to see you out there. Uh, we're so grateful that you came on with us tonight. Uh, why don't you let folks know if you're interested in folks finding you on Twitter? Mm-hmm. Let folks know where they can follow you on Twitter if you want them to, or <laughs> yeah, uh, anything mean, exciting yeah. you got going on outside of football. If there's anything else you want to talk about? Yeah, I mean, uh, you can follow me on uh, Twitter at Jamie on underscore Franklin, but uh, not much really uh, interesting going on. I'm a pretty low key guy. I do tweet funny stuff, so mm-hmm. you know, he's a good follower. Know, it's a lot of a lot of sports related stuff and a lot of my opinions that don't really matter, but it makes you laugh. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's all I got going on. Really, you know, uh, excited to be in Baltimore. Uh, excited to finally uh, fill my dreams of being in the NFL, but it doesn't stop there. You know, uh, I want to be in this league for a long time. So excited to learn from the vets when I get back and uh, learning ways to be around. So uh, really excited and thankful for your guys' platform having me on and uh, go Ravens, dude! Absolutely, yes, I'll I'll. I'll, I'll this is the actual last thing I'll tell you. When you're in town, 
and you're down the city, you mm-hmm. need a good list of restaurants, hit us up on Twitter. That's it. Got got all the good spots, dude. We'll we'll hook you up mm-hmm. and uh, make sure you're eating good. But uh, we appreciate it once again, man. Thank you so much. Have a great evening, and uh, hopefully we can have you on soon. Uh, yeah, we in, in the near future, maybe if we do a live show in person, come hang out with us. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, eat, eat on us and uh, come hang out with the, the the local uh folks here. That'd be awesome. But thanks again, man. We appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like I said, uh, thank you guys for allowing me to be on your platform and uh, share a little insight of uh, what my what I'm about. So yes, uh, you guys are good folks. I'll definitely be back soon. I appreciate you. Okay, I'm man. In. Talk appreciate to you. Jamie. Take care. Yeah. Yes, sir, man. What a good, I mean, man, hey. yeah, we always talk about like, yeah, we want good football players, but you want good guys too. I mean, I don't think you'll find a much better guy than Jamie on. My goodness. How awesome was that? What a solid dude. He's got his head on straight. Um, yeah. You can tell he's, he's excited about the opportunity, excited to work hard. Uh, mm-hmm. And I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. I think kids. I'm rooting that, for him. He's got a fan in me. I'll tell you that. Same here. I think guys that realize the opportunity that they have, Yep. Some guys just, I don't know. I feel like some guys just don't realize. He gets it. it. I yeah. get it. Yeah, absolutely. And so, it. you know, I, I hope it all works out for him and goes well. And uh, look, he seems like he's not afraid of the work either. So uh, let's go, Jamie on. Let's let's get it done. Like Glenn said, we're rooting for him. And those Hall of Fame reps, right, Glenn? That's what we want. Dude, Can't. Baby. I mean, dude, how cool is that? You're a Ravens fan and you end up being a Raven. Like you're sitting there. You know that Ray Lewis sat in that locker room. You know T-Sizz mm-hmm. sat. I mean. Come on.